Okay, so these are homework solutions uh, for sections 2.5 through 2.8. Uh, this was a box with a height uh, that is double the width and the length, and we were given that the volume was 18 cubic feet. So the volume of a box like this is length times width times height, length times width times height, which is 18. Uh, we multiply, we get 2x squared y equals uh, 18, and we solve for y, and we simplify 18 over 2x squared into 9 over x squared. Now the total surface area of the box is two equal side um, areas, 2xy, um, uh, base times height, then two um, left and right, so x times 2x, base times height, and top and bottom, y times x, twice. Sorry, this was y times x twice, this was the side, and this was um, front and back. So 2xy plus 4xy, 6xy, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Of course, we will have to replace y by 9 over x squared in here. We simplify uh, an x, and we get 6 times 9, 54 over x, and then 4x squared. We differentiate this. Remember, 1 over x prime is negative 1 over x squared, so that's how we get negative 54 over x squared, and then 8x. We set this equal to 0. We have to find the least common denominator, multiplying 8x by x squared. So we get negative 54 plus 8x cubed. A fraction is 0 only when the top is 0. We move 54 to the other side. We apply the cube root, so we get 54 over 8, 6.75, and x is the cube root of 6.75, which is approximately 1.89. Going back and dividing 9 by 1.89 squared, we get y to be 2.52, and the height is twice x so twice times x is 3.78 feet. We have to show that this gives a minimum. Um, in the table, x, which is the cube root of 6.75, 0 for the first derivative. We study the sign. If you plug in just to the top, because you need the denominator, there is no need. It's positive. If you plug in 0, you'll see that this is negative. On the other side, is positive. So this is typical for a minimum situation. Uh, here we're given... Um, the profit, uh, we were asked to evaluate it for 60 units, and we did, we plugged it in. Uh, then for 59 units, we did, we plugged it in. And then we, uh, we were, basically in part B, we were asked to find the increase, the decrease, basically, in, um, in cost, uh, if we only manufacture 59. So this minus this will give us 812. Now we were asked to find the marginal profit, which is the derivative of the profit, bring down 3, uh, bring down 2, plus 900. We were asked to find the marginal profit when 60 units are produced. We just plugged it in. And um, this is basically um, the differential of the function. dy equals p prime times dx. dx in this case is the difference between a 59 and 60, which is just 1. So we get that. Then we were asked to use differentials to determine what will cost, what will uh, be the increase in the, um, in the profit when we manufacture 61. This is the same thing with the formula. P of x plus dx is approximately P of x plus P prime times dx. And this is P of 61, 60 plus 1, 60 plus 1. This is 60, this is 60, and this is 1. So P of 60 I copied from the previous page. And P prime, P prime of 60 is this 812 plus 2, 0.2, and this is what we get when we add those two. And the 50.784, from the previous page. Here we were given a function. We were asked to find uh, dx, which is the same with delta x, delta x dx, 0.5, and uh, we determined the exact. The exact is 1.5, f of 1.5 minus f of 1, which is this. And dy is f prime of x dx, which is this, after we differentiate 1 over x squared into negative 2 over x cubed times dx. And we plug in x for, um, we plugged in 1 for x, and dx is 0.5. And we got negative 1. 
and this is the derivative of the function. I um, brought down negative 2, subtracting 1 from the power, and I got this. Here we were asked to um, approximate the cube of 28. So this is the same, exact the same formula that we discussed, f of x plus f prime of x dx. So f of x is the cube of x, f prime is 1 over 3, x to negative 2 thirds, which reduces to this when we change the negative power into 1 over. And then I copied the cube of 27 plus this, evaluated 27 and times dx, which is 1, because I'm looking at 27 to 28. So this is 3. This is, so the cube of 27 is 3, but another 3. 3 times 3, 3 is 9, times 2 is 18. So this is 3 times 18 plus 1, which is this. This is guaranteed to approximate this, which is a linear expression, or in this case, numerical expression, to approximate a cube root. Here we were asked to find the differential of y, so I used the product rule. 3x squared times this plus x cubed times this prime, 2, 2x two plus 5 times 2. Um, I rearranged it, uh, moving 2 in front and organized it a little bit, and factored out uh, x squared and 2x plus 5, so I get 3. Um, 3 times 2x plus 3 times 5 is 15, and what is left here is just a 4x. Combine like terms, and we get 10x plus 15, and I can also factor out another 5. So this is uh, y prime. At this point, we have dy equals this times dx. This f prime of x times dx. Here we were asked to use uh, implicit differentiation and differentiate. This is the product rule. x prime is 1 times y plus one, x times y prime, which is dy over dx. x is the variable, so minus 1, plus 2 times y, but this is 2 times the function, so it's 2 times the function prime, and 3 prime is 0. I factored out uh, dy over dx from x plus 2. I moved 1 to the other side. I moved y to the other side. So then dy is this over this. And now we're asked to evaluate it when x is negative 5 and when y is 2 thirds. We just plugged it in. 1 minus 2 thirds over negative 5 plus 2, which is negative 3. Find the least common denominator at the top, or just say 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third. 1 third, this is negative 3 over 1. Negative 3 over 1 gets flipped into negative 1 over 3, so the answer would be negative 1 over 9. Same question here. We were asked to uh, differentiate implicitly. So we differentiate the left-hand side, and we differentiate the right-hand side. So 3x squared p squared plus x cubed 2p times the inner function prime, which is dp over dx, and the right-hand side is 0. I move this to the other side and divide it by 2x cubed p, 2x cubed p. On the other side, 3x squared p squared, that's why there is a minus. I simplify 2x's and I simplify the p. So the top is 3p and then uh, 2x with minus in front. Uh, finally, we were asked to find um, the rate of change of um, revenue, cost, and profit, knowing that x is also um, a function of time. So 2 times x is 2 times dx dt. And I just plugged in the numbers, and 2 and 8, and I got 16 units per day. Um, uh, dc over dt, I, I differentiated um, 0 0.02 times x times dx over dt plus, I'm not sure if it's very clear here, plus 0.6 times dx over dt. I just plugged in the numbers, 0 0.02 times 20 times 8 plus 0 0.6 times 8, and I got 8 units. This is the relationship, and this is correct. We can assume 16 minus 8 only because this relationship does not have products, powers, ratios. It's a linear relationship. Otherwise, we will not be able to conclude this. We would have to have to determine the function and start from scratch to find dp over dt. So be very careful. This is a specific situation in which we have a linear function. That's why this works. Do not use this for any other types of relationships. Careful. Thank you.